Jews family. All right. <laughs> yeah. I uh, we're, we're certainly glad to have you with us this morning, your family, and uh, uh, they're both visiting here, and we're excited about having you here this morning. And I pray that this morning's service will be a blessing to each and every one of yeah. them, and to you all that are that are here this morning, and also those that are listening online. Uh, yeah. I do want to remind you to continue to pray for our pastor and family. Uh, they're, they're still. As far as protocol, they still want to stay out a little bit longer That's just right. to make sure that they are over the virus. Uh, and Pastor, okay. and I think everyone, Gregory, um, Joshua, and Faith are doing pretty good. And Pastor yeah. is still having some cough. Uh, Mrs. Dawson is probably the one that's been affected by it the most. Uh, she's still having some problems with her lungs. But do continue to pray for her and lift her up that God will heal her uh, completely or so that she can be uh, well, and hopefully next Sunday they'll be able to be here if everything goes well. So continue to pray for them. And while we are doing that, I want all of us while we're here just to say, uh, as a chorus, to say, Pastor, uh, and Miss Dawson, and family, we love you guys. All right? Can y'all do that? Yeah. I'm sure they're listening. Let's all one, two, three. Pastor, Miss Dawson, we love you all and family. All right, I think it would be just great for them to hear that this morning. Amen. Uh, I do want to say we have a have a treat of having both the missionary families here with us this morning. I just want to let you guys know some sad news that I'm going to have to present to y'all this morning. I know you all are looking forward to it. Uh, since they are here, uh, they are going to help with the music. So y'all going to have to wait a little longer for my soul. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know you guys are waiting and excited about that. Maybe next year or, you know, I give you know, next year we give y'all something to look forward to. Amen. My solo. I, I'm going to do my solo. Amen. So you guys are, are, are still in for another treat. Amen. Uh, just a blessing. Amen. Well, let's take our hymnals if you can this morning. Uh, uh, we're going to welcome our missionary families. But we just want to say uh, we love you all. Uh, Pastor, want to say love you all. Glad we all have you all here. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is, well, we are having a baptism this morning as well, so we're excited about that, so uh, let's just praise the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings as we uh, gather here this morning. Father, thank you again for your blessings. God, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. And God, we thank you that you are God of, 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 of heavens, and Lord, that you answer prayer. And how we come this morning before you, Lord, asking you to work and do some things that we are beyond our abilities, and that is to lift our pastor and his family up to you, pray that you continue to work in their midst as we see them recover from this COVID virus, pray you work in a special way, and we do uh, pray especially for Miss Dawson this morning, Lord, who's been affected by it probably the most, that she, you would touch her body and heal, heal her in a special way. We thank you for our missionary families that are with us this morning as well, pray that you continue to work in their ministry there. And we look forward to hearing testimonies from them as to the work and the things that are going on in their ministry. And again, as we uh, say many times at this time of the year, you are the reason for the season. And truly you are. And we pray that everything that we say and do here this morning will truly bring glory and honor to you. And Lord, if there be anyone here this morning without a saving knowledge or the assurance of Jesus Christ being their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that this will be the day that they would make that decision for you before it's eternally too late. We love you and praise you and thank you for the time that we can be together. Pray that we sense your spirit working in a mighty way. We ask these things now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right. Well, again, if you would take your hymnals, let's turn over to hymn number 466. 466. Here we go. Sing one stanza of that song.
blessed when we hear those voices. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to do one more song. Uh, song number 194. Okay. Bringing in the Christmas uh, spirit this Amen. morning. We're saying joy to the world. What a beautiful song. And we, be, we ought to be joyful this morning. Yes. Amen. And joy to the world. Our Savior has come. Amen. Soroka. So it is a, in some ways, a strategic place to have a, a Bible preaching 
a gospel-centered church that's going to give people the truth, and we'd like to see a church established there. Uh, since our last furlough, uh, we also have been asked, my co-worker and I, to lead a service out in a, one of the villages in our region. There was an existing work of believers that come from a couple different villages. We picked them up on the way. There was a pastor coming from another town, and it was just uh, farther away than they were able really really to give a lot of attention to that work. And so my co-worker and I have been able to uh, start ministering there. We have Sunday afternoon services there in the village. Most of those believers are up in age. Uh, many of them feel alone because there aren't that many believers in their family or in their village. But we're able to walk along with them in the later stages of their life and preach God's word to them, encourage them. Uh, another ministry that we're a part of that we really enjoy there's a children's center in a different village, but close to our uh, city of Soroka, and we've been able to hold a Bible club, and it's been neat to see how the Lord has uh, kept the door open there. When we first started, we heard about it because uh, a couple kids from a different children's center were moved there, and this one was opening, and we approached the director about being able to have a Bible club there. There was a little bit of hesitancy because we are not Eastern Orthodox like many people in Moldova are. But uh, we've started, and they have seen that we're not just pushing the name Baptist. We're trying to push Jesus Christ. We're trying to tell them about what God's Word says. And so we have an open door. The director is fully behind us now. And so we're really wanting to share the gospel with these kids. Certainly, we'd like to see results now. We want to see kids be saved and all. But we uh, are excited to be able to give them the truth of God's Word, the foundations from God's Word. If you think of that ministry, uh, I should have mentioned... On the back of our prayer card, there are specific prayer requests uh, that we've mentioned, and this is one of the things that are mentioned there uh, for this uh, children's center and the ministry there, that uh, the, the truth of God's word, would the kids would latch onto it. Kids are sharp, and kids can remember a lot of things that we adults uh, forget too easily. So we're praying that they, uh, that we'd be able to start build a foundation on God's word with these kids, and that the Lord would work however he sees fit. One unexpected blessing is that we've seen that the, the workers have really, uh, the ones that are with the children at the center, many times that they will sit in and participate in the lessons. And recently we found out that they are helping some of the kids learn the verses that we are trying to learn. And so there's, there's an open door with them as well. Uh, there are other things that we're a part of. Uh, we teach some English lessons. Uh, it's not difficult for us to know English because we grew up here, but many people uh, in Europe, uh, they want to know English, and Moldova especially, because America offers the possibility of better jobs or changing their, their life. Uh, and the, the, if you have a, a chance sometime, uh, we have left our presentation uh, here, and you may see it, but uh, we mentioned in there, we thought it would maybe be high school or college age, young people yeah. that would want to, to learn English, but it's actually been the, the largest portion of people have been ladies in their 50s and 60s. But that is allowed. Uh, Viola has several ladies in her class, and she's been able to uh, befriend them and minister to them. So uh, right now, we just we haven't seen one main thing just really take off, but we have these different ministries that we're able to be a part of. We enjoy each of them and uh, trying to minister to the people that the Lord has brought along. And that's what we're doing in Moldova. If you don't have one of our prayer cards, I'd ask you to just uh, I'm not asking you to do a whole lot. You don't have to pay for it. It's yeah. free for today. Uh, so just grab one of those because we would appreciate your prayers. We know that in our strength, we can't do all that we would like to. Uh, we'd like to see the Lord continue to work in Moldova. Uh, it is a blessing to be with you here today. Despite the, the strange circumstances of Pastor not being here, I, I am a little disappointed that I'm going to miss the solo, though. Pastor, why don't you guys come back? You don't think you could fit it in today? I, He's got a black board on. No. That, that really disappointed me when I heard that. So, uh, I don't know what you have going on after the service, but if you have a chance to come by and just say hi and we can talk for a little bit, we'd love to be there. As I said, when I was a kid, I used to think, you know, you just you try to follow the Lord and life just goes pretty well. But as, as I've gotten older, I've just found that we all struggle with things. Maybe for someone it's problems in the family, maybe for someone else it's health problems. And this life, uh, I've just seen more and more as I get a little bit older that it's a struggle and it's difficult. And we need the encouragement from each other. 
And praise the Lord that we have a future to look forward to that we can put all those things aside. And so just like you, we're trying to walk through this life and trying to minister to others, trying to, to grow in the Lord ourselves. And if we can be any type of encouragement to you, we'd love to try to do that. We thank you for allowing us to be here today. Amen. saying that, I know people are really going to be excited, so I'm going to make sure the next time they come through, we're going to consider yeah. it a solo. Amen? <laughs> All right. But it is good to have them with us this morning as well. Uh, I want to do just a few announcements before we have Brother Hitz to come and give his uh, update on what God is doing there. But I do want to again remind, remind you to pray for Pastor and family. I know this is one of the hardest times and things for him not to be here to preach the Word of God. Amen? And I'm certainly I feel privileged to be able to do that in his stead. Uh, I don't like the circumstances that it brings it about, but I look forward to hopefully being a blessing to you all this morning. Amen. Continue to lift them up. And again, it is only about 20, man, it's what, 20 days before Christmas? Wow. Uh, so it's closely approaching. Uh, it seems like this year has gone by so fast with so many things that are going on. Uh, but continue to pray for them and lift them up. They covered our prayers, and I know he's looking forward to being healthy. Wealthy and wise, don't about wealthy, but wise, amen, uh, and being able to get back. We do have a baptism today. We're looking forward to our two candidates who will be baptized. And I believe next Sunday, and Lord willing, if Pastor Zay will be here, to have a quick budget meeting right after uh, the service to give you an update on what's going on there. Uh, we do have some anniversaries and birthdays that are in, in the, uh, this, this month. Uh, the Stanton family is going to be celebrating, or they celebrated one that should have been yesterday. Brother Duffy is going to get younger this year. Kathy is getting younger. Uh, Neat and Tony are getting uh, more beautiful. Amen. I won't say no more. Amen. But they are growing up. I tell you, it's a complete blessing. And now we're going to have our other missionary come. And he is the one that has his own plan, choir, football team, basketball. He has it all. Amen. <laughs> Cheerleaders as well. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning, and it's just a joy to be back. Uh, Jacob was mentioning some some things from the past, and uh, one of the memories I have first coming here, uh, the first time we came through, I believe our son, our oldest one, who's now 14, he turned, he had his first birthday. We were staying at a place, and uh, we went and got him a cupcake, and he was born. Uh, we got that video up, find that somewhere, and so do the math, and you know pretty much how long ago that was that we were here that first time. And yes, we're also thankful for uh, just your, your your pastor, Pastor Dawson. Hello, brother the camera. There we go. Uh, we're so sorry we couldn't see you today, but we love you all. And just so thankful for your faithful prayers and support of our family, we're trying to help our children. You know, now we have ten of them, and uh, help them understand just just how much these churches have meant to us and, and what you have done for us by praying, by faithfully giving to us. And now that it's been over a decade, honestly, it's just hard to believe it's been over a decade of you all supporting us, well over 10 years. And you start realizing those, you know, those monthly checks, those, you know, weekly times of prayer. And you start doing that times 10 and you realize, you know, you all have had a significant part in our lives and our ministry in the North. And we're just so thankful. Thank you for, for being there. So, so, so appreciated. Now, i got to say, Pastor Dawson might be wondering, what, what's Brother Hitz doing there without a suit on? Now, I just have to, we're going to intro again, remind you where my family lives, okay? We live in the far north, the Arctic. Now, you all are having weather in the 60s right now? Are we getting up into the 70s still? Okay? Now, you have to understand, 75? We never see 75 degrees. Even in our summer, we might see 71, 72. So, you've got to bear with your with your brother here this morning that it, it is really hot here. Just don't, so I'm not wearing my suit coat this morning. But just don't talk to my brother-in-law because the other reason I might not be wearing it is because I accidentally left it in the hotel in Albuquerque yesterday, oh, no. last night. So um, anyway, that was my excuse anyway. When I just told on myself. So uh, Isaiah chapter 42 tells us about the Lord, of a prophecy of, of our Messiah. And one of the things he it says here is that he, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. And we live in the far north, the very far northeast corner of Canada. And the next thing east of us is, is Greenland. So we're pretty far north. And we're an island, the fifth, sixth largest island in the world by their calculations. 
not mine, I don't know who does that, but uh, it's a large island, and we live in the capital city. It's kind of similar uh, in some ways to what uh, my brother-in-law Jacob was saying about they're planning a church in Soroka, and that's uh, kind of a regional hub there. People in the outlying villages come. We're the capital of the whole territory, the island. There's eight other communities. And so pretty much the whole eastern Arctic, if you're going anywhere up there, you come through our town of Itali. So we see it much the same way. We came there to start the church there and see that as a central hub. And we hope and, and pray and are working to see this established well, then that can be a, an influence to the rest of the territory and, and the island. So we've been uh, in that town of the last 12 some years. We've been there a little over 11 years and started a Kaluit Baptist church there. We have a group of three, four families and then some individuals. We're not a, not a huge group either. Um, you know, as, as uh, Jacob was saying, you would sure like to be bigger and further along than we are, but uh, we're thankful for the, 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 the souls that we do see coming, some that have professed faith in Christ, others that um, had come to know the Lord elsewhere, but uh, we're so thankful that our town finally had a, what we would consider, you know, a just a, a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church. They're so thrilled. To, to see that and the doctrine of scripture being taught and uh, we're just thankful for the, those folks as well and seeing growth in their lives. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We're still in the, the, I would say in many ways, the early years of establishing the church in Itali, the main city. Some of the things that we have going on, I'll just close with that. Um, um, maybe some other similarities as well. We have a lot of just, um, we have some different outlying ministries that we're Doing, trying to do as well to influence the community. You have to understand uh, where we live, people often ask, okay, so do you live close to the church? And the answer is everybody lives close to everyone, right? So it's the far north. There's no road to get there from down south. You have to fly three hours on a 737 jet. That's about 1,100 miles north of Ottawa, Ontario. So if you know where Ottawa is, the capital of Canada, you have to fly three hours north. On a, on a jet, so it's over a thousand miles. So there's no roads, there are no trees. Um, our town is about 8,500 people, and it's the big city. And this is like, you know, the big city to everyone else. So when you consider 8,500 being the big city, you know, the other communities are 350, 3,000, some, there's one community of about 80 some people, and they're all hundreds of miles apart from each other, and you have to fly in, fly out. That's pretty much the only way, unless you go by snowmobile. In the winter, or maybe by boat, a lot of them are by the shore. <coughs> so, uh, small, smaller communities, but in a way, everybody knows everybody. So, even though there are millions of people, you don't go to the street corner like Toronto or, or New York City and see all these people. Um, the unique thing about a, a more isolated place is that, with in a way, everyone knowing everyone, you can you can be an influence to almost the entire community without even meeting anybody. Without, you know, there's, think about being downtown Tucson. You might see, meet somebody and never see them again, right? right? Like, there's just that many people, whereas in the smaller communities, you can have a, a testimony that really goes everywhere because of the closeness of the community. So we're thankful for those opportunities as well. A couple things we have coming up uh, that you can be in prayer for is, first of all, our Canadian citizenship. We're allowed to be Canadian and U.S., right? We're U.S. by birth, but uh, God willing and this next year, we should see it all come together, and we'll be able to be Canadian citizens. That's a big step for us as missionaries to be able to do that. And a couple other things is uh, we have a prison ministry we've been doing for a while. With COVID, it kind of got shut down for a while here. Things are getting ready to come back. And one of the opportunities we have going back is to start up an actual program in the prison, uh, an actual program administered through their system that I would be running as a basically like a uh, an addictions program, but it's all based on scripture. So that's something we're excited about doing it there locally, right in our own prison system. The second thing is, and you can be in prayer for this as well, is that our local uh, police force has never had any kind of chaplaincy program locally, and they uh, we've just been working through the paperwork. It looks like everything's going to go through, Amen. and uh, God willing, when I go back, hopefully we'll be ready to get things started. And I and another friend in a different community will, Lord willing, be the first two chaplains in the far north in our region. And you would pray for that, too, that we would have a ministry to these officers and their families and really get on both sides of, of everything. We can 
be in the prisons and giving the gospel there. We could be with the officers giving the gospel and just uh, seeking to minister to people as the Lord opens doors. So there's some things going on. We appreciate your prayers. Thank you for praying for us. We have prayer cards on the back table as well. Ours, I'll make mine free today too since Jacob did. Okay. Free today. But, uh, please, please take some. And we'd love to talk to you after the service. The Lord bless you. Thank you for all you do for us. special for us leading up to our message for today. Amen. So y'all know why I'm giving up my time today. <laughs> I'm putting my solo on hold because I'm outnumbered. <laughs> oh yeah.
grandmother is certainly excited to have her little ones around her and her daughters and summer laws and it's just a blessing at this time of the year when you think about the holiday season. Amen? Amen. And uh, I, I again want to say thank you all for, for praying for me this week. I'm sure I sense your prayers and I try to do the same for you and yeah. continue to pray for our pastor as well and family that they can recover from uh, the thing that COVID has brought upon their bodies and, and in the family there. And I know with all of my heart that it is hard for him to be at home this morning and not be able to be in the service. I know how much he loves preaching the word of God and, and I consider it an honor and a privilege that I have to be able to fill in this morning in his stead. Amen. And thank you all for being faithful to the house of the Lord and those that have helped out with trying to, to make the service go well this morning. And we're certainly pleased about that. And our pastor sends his love and thank you to all of you that have been involved Amen. in helping us to do that this morning. I want to uh, share something this morning that God has laid on my heart as I I think about last week we talked about uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, chapter number 9. As we looked at 1 Samuel this, uh, yesterday, we talked, I mean last Sunday, we talked about the thing about in Samuel's life that God has assured Samuel that <coughs> the people that Samuel was ministering to his entire life, that Samuel was not the one that they were rejecting. They were not rejecting him, but God was assuring Samuel that they were rejecting him. And I believe one of the saddest tragedies, not only uh, in Moldova or either in the Baffin Islands or wherever we would be where the gospel has a chance and opportunity to, to minister and affect lives, there are people still there that are rejecting Christ. And I believe this morning that we have one of the greatest challenges before us when we think about the, the, the gospel and we think about the privilege that we have to have the gospel or you have to be presented the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you hear this morning and you're sure that Christ is your Savior, what a blessing and what a privilege it, it, it is. Yeah. And I believe in our, our society and even in our world today that there are so many that are rejecting God because of their ignorance of who Christ really is. When we say that this year or this time of the season is the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. How can you celebrate something about something that has the greatest value in all of society in the world today and you leave the most important ingredient out and that is Jesus Christ? We live in a society that we, we think about the gifts and we think about the celebrations, we think about getting together even as families and it is nice and both giving, I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't, but enjoy those things. But I believe one of the greatest challenges before us is to be willing to minister to those that are ignorant of the gospel yeah. and who are rejecting the gospel. I want us to take our Bibles this morning and be able to stand. We want to turn to one of the probably the most familiar area of scripture, but I believe it's the, probably the most important uh, scriptures in the Bible, and it is John chapter number three. John chapter three. I'm going to read, uh, a, I believe, probably the first seven or, or first seven or eight verses that are there. And I want to share a message this morning that I believe we're going to see a man here named Nicodemus who is ignorant, but he's also ignorant of rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is one of the things that not only we see in Nicodemus' life, but I believe is in the lives of many people that you and I would have an opportunity to minister to. And it says in John chapter 3, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man doeth that th can do, for no man doeth the things that thou, Rabbi, we know that thou art a, art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can these things be? Uh, how, uh, Nicodemus said unto him, How can, can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter 
and to the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say unto thee, you must be born again. Father, thank you again for the privilege that we have this morning to have the canon scriptures before us in our hand. That we can hold it with boldness and, and security of knowing that if we know Christ as Savior, we have a place in heaven because of what your son did on the cross. He died for our sins and not just for us personally, but for the entire world. That he might make a difference in our society, make a difference in this world that would be pleasing to you that he would send your son to die on the cross for our sin. Father, help us this morning to have a clarity of speech and an understanding of the importance of this gospel message that you are presenting to us this morning. Thank you for our missionaries. Thank you for our pastor. Pray you continue to work in his heart and his life and family. I pray this morning that you would empty me of myself, fill me with your spirit, that I might speak, thus saith the Lord. And those that are recipients of what will be said and heard this morning, whether they're here in my presence or whether they're here online listening, that you might be honored and glorified in everything that would be said and everything that would be done. If anyone amongst us listening or here this morning without Christ, that this would be the day that they would make that decision for you before it's eternally too late. Bless now, I pray. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. I think about it this morning, and, and, and in all actuality, uh, it, it reminds me of this year. When you look back throughout this year, there are so many things, as we said last last week, about uh, the people when Isaiah was, I mean, and Samuel was ministering, yeah. that were rejecting Samuel, but God assured him that they were not rejecting him, mm -hmm. they were rejecting God. And I believe this morning, one of the greatest privileges of all the world that Nicodemus had the privilege of being in the presence of the one that could give him the most influence to give him the clarity that he needed and the understanding of what he needed when he came to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And one of the things that I can say this morning that I believe with all of my heart, what people need to hear mm -hmm. and what people need us to do is take the wonderful privileges and opportunities that we have, that God gives each and every one of us each and every day, is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to people that we're talking to. Because we don't know whether they're saved or whether they're not saved. But I believe one of the tragedies is we can talk about everything in the world, mm -hmm. but we won't talk about Jesus Christ. And what they really need is somebody that would take the time and share with them the importance of the gospel. Most people won't make a decision because they're ignorant of the truth. Wow. And they're ignorant, but their ignorance is causing them to reject the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen and rejection can come because we're ignorant. You all remember me saying, and one of the things that really laid on my heart this morning about this area, you remember me talking earlier this year, I had the privilege of leading both of my aunts to the Lord. Yes, and one of the things that I knew, and I believed in all my heart, that both of them had been church goers all of their life, just like I was Amen. until I got saved. And as I thought about it, going there ministering uh, to my aunt, and my aunt, when I thought about her being in the hospital and all of the things that she was going to, going through physically, but I believe the greatest need that she had was spiritually. And I'll ask God to give me the privilege and opportunity to share the gospel with her. Because you know what? You can pray for people that they can be physically healed. But we ought to pray for people that need to be spiritually healed. Yes, sir. What she needed more than a physical healing, she needed a spiritual healing. And I took this opportunity to share with her the story or this thing about what God was sharing with Nicodemus because he took the opportunity to share it with Nicodemus. And not only did I share that with my aunt that was in the hospital, I had an opportunity to take this same area of scriptures and share it with the other aunt that lived in New York that was there visiting the aunt in California. We were there one night as we were sitting in my aunt's house, and the Lord had already laid on my heart before I even got there. That she needed to be saved. I knew that all of both of my aunt and probably most of my family 
have been in church all of their lives. Mm -hmm. But I also realized that they are probably not saved. Wow. And I asked my aunt, just like I did the one that was in the hospital, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? And just like the one in, in the hospital, you, I told you guys, I could look at the little bony fingers that she had, and she pointed all these reasons on her fingers, uh, one by one, as to why she would be in heaven. Mm -hmm. The one that I was talking to now that's from New York, that's there in California visiting, as we were there at my aunt's house, I asked her the same question, and she gave me all of these reasons. She believed that I'm, I'm saved. I, I think so. I've been baptized. A baptism won't get you into heaven. It won't save you. And I, I shared this same area of scripture and talked to her about the importance of the gospel. And I believe when Jesus came or when Nicodemus came to Jesus, he was inquiring about something, but the inquiry was really about the gospel because he's talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice what he says here. First of all, I want us to notice the inquiry of the gospel. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do it these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. The man that's inquiring here is Nicodemus. He's inquiring, uh, uh, and you think about the moment of his inquiring, but the manner of his inquiry, Nicodemus came as a religious man. The party that he was a part of were the Pharisees, and they had no idea, really, of who Jesus Christ really was. I think about Nicodemus as he came inquiring of the Lord. Think about, first of all, the party that he came for. You think about the position that he held. He was one that was considered a very knowledgeable person of the history or religious laws or religion there in the country. But yet he had all of these uh, positions that he held. And let me say this, ignorance comes in every position. It makes no matter what position that you're in, or uh, whether they're in the White House or whether they're in the Poor House, there are people that need to be saved. And religion has had people bamboozled just like it did Nicodemus, just like I believe it did with my aunts that they thought that they were okay where they were, but really what he needed was the gospel. And what I like about it is that Jesus wasted no time getting to what he knew that Nicodemus had need of. See, we can talk about a lot of things. I went there and I loved both of my aunts. And one of the greatest privileges that I believe that all of us have is that if we don't look at things spiritually, we're not looking at things the way that we ought to be looking at things. Life is full of a lot of trials, and, and everybody's going through some hurts. Everybody's going through some suffering. This Jesus truly still is the reason for the season. But I believe the greatest thing that people need to know, no matter what they're going through, Jesus still is the answer to our problems. He's still the answer. Because unless you know Jesus Christ the Savior, everything that happens to you day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour, Jesus can help you through what you're going through. Amen. But you have to know him. And in order to, to know him, you got to know him in order to be able to trust him. You can tell people about Christ. They can, they can be in all kind of uh, positions. They can be in all kind of professions. But you know, if they don't know Christ the Savior, none of this is going to matter when they stand before the Lord because one day they're going to stand before God. And I believe that here we see not only the inquiry of Nicodemus about the gospel, but the introduction of the gospel. Jesus Christ went right to the most important thing. He talked to Nicodemus about a birth. And the birth that he was talking about was not just the natural birth. When you think about all the births that have taken place throughout history, the first one began when, when Jesus reached down into the ground and from uh, God reached down and from the dust of the ground, we have the soil birth where he gave to, to Adam. We think about the, 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 the surgical birth that uh, Eve went through when he reached into Adam's side and took a rib and he formed her. We think about this, the, the birth that took place there. You think about those births. 
that took place, and, and when we think about birth, as Jesus was talking to him, we think about the, the birth when, when Mary, when the Spirit of God placed our Savior into her womb, that was a, that was a different birth, it was birthed by the Holy Spirit of God. When you think about the birth that Jesus Christ is talking about, he's talking about a spiritual birth. And I believe my aunt and, and just like Nicodemus did not understand, and we can see here in Scripture what a spiritual birth really means. A spiritual birth changes life. Yes, sir, it, it changes things. It gives us a different perspective. It gives us a different attitude. It ought to give us a, a different sense of comfort. And it gives us a different value of what life is all about when you think about the spiritual birth. And the greatest need about this is everybody in this earth, men, women, boys, and girls, need Jesus Christ. Amen. They need Christ. Right. It's a distinctive birth. The, the, it's a distinctive because he told them it was a spiritual birth. It is a divine birth because only the Spirit of God can give you that birth that he's talking about. It's a dynamic birth because it changes our life completely. Yes, it, does, it changes everything that you and I can do, everything that we live for, this birth that God is talking to, Jesus Christ is talking to Nicodemus about. But Nicodemus shows that he's ignorant mm -hmm. of this birth that Jesus Christ is talking about. In verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very early, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Mm -hmm. The comments that Nicodemus is making when we think about the ignorance of the gospel, the carnality that he relates it to. Because he's thinking about the physical. Mm -hmm. I know as much as grandma that's here this morning, her daughters could not go back into her womb. Mm -hmm. that's right. The mothers that are here this morning, your children cannot enter back into your womb. Right. But the carnality, but the Bible says the natural man understandeth not the things of God because he's spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus is just as carnal minded as most people are when you start talking about the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. They have no idea. And because they don't understand, they reject it. Because it doesn't make any sense to them. But you and I have to realize this morning, we have to break it down to where they understand it. And you think about, the simplest thing may be the hardest things for people who don't know Christ to understand what it means to be born again. Jesus took the time, and here in Nicodemus, he's in sitting with the greatest teacher in the world. God knew his heart. God knew what he needed to hear. And he's sitting there, and he's under the influence of the Son of God, and the Spirit of God is taking the Word of God, who's there talking to him, to give him some understanding. And that's what had to happen with me telling my aunts about what this passage is talking about. And we got to be willing to do that. And, 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 and the conclusion here of it all, this highest position that Nicodemus had in religion, or religiously speaking, he was just as ignorant as anybody walking along the street Amen. that would be in this world in which we live in. Mm -hmm. He had no idea what it meant to be born again. And it's ignorance because notice what he says. How can these things be? Am I going to go into my mother's womb a second time? Enter into her womb? I don't think she wants you to come sit in her lap. Yeah. Let alone back into her womb. Amen. When you are an adult, maybe a child might have a chance. Amen? Amen. It takes the work of the Holy Spirit of God to reveal this truth yes, to someone that he would share it with. Amen. But you know what? God is willing to do that yes. if we're willing to take the time and show people. Amen. We're failing him because we're looking at things carnally mm -hmm. and we're not looking at life spiritually. Even some of us that are Christians. 
We talk about everything under the sun. We joke and laugh every day. But if we don't consciously ask God to help us to be sensitive to the needs of people who are around us, family, friends, co-workers, strangers on the streets, foreign lands and countries, if we don't ask God to help us, he won't. But the Spirit of God is willing to take the Word of God if you and I will allow it to be such a part of us that we're sensitive enough to share it in its simplicity. It gives a person an opportunity to become the Christ. This is what Jesus is doing with Nicodemus. Think about it this morning. The compliments that he makes. The condemnation of ignorance is upon him because the position that he holds, he is a master of what they consider a master. Aren't there a master teacher of Israel? In other words, you ought to be an instructor of this book. And you don't know how important it is to understand what it means to be born again. His position. And folks, let me say this. Romans chapter number three gives us another thing. He has the privilege of having the scriptures. Amen. Romans chapter three and verse one says this. What advantage then have the Jews? Or what profit is there in circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. That's what makes it sad. He has the privilege of having the truth. You and I this morning have the privilege of having the truth. And are we sharing it with those that need to hear it? Those that need to understand of it. We're privileged. We're no different than Nicodemus. We can be religious on the outside, but we need to be spiritual enough on the inside to realize that the world needs the gospel. They need Jesus Christ. And the privilege that he had has caused him to be ignorant, and he's really rejecting the gospel even by the ignorant comments that he's making here in this passage of Scripture. And Jesus just goes on a little bit more and explains it to him. The curse of ignorance is elementary, really, when you think about it. He's explaining a very, very plain and simple thing that Nicodemus ought to understand. Mm -hmm. And it's really elementary. It's plain, it's simple, and it's clear. It may be to us in a greater extent because now we understand what it means to be born again because most of us that I would assume that are here this morning, we're saved. Yeah. And when we think about somebody else listening to it, the, the understanding what the birth is can be a little bit hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Because most people in our society relate to knowing Christ and, and, and being born again, when it talks about the water birth, it talks about the spiritual birth. He said, except a man be born of water, which is the sack birth, which is the natural birth, it's not talking about baptism. Right. These people that be baptized this morning are not going to be saved because they get baptized. Right. They're, going, they're saved because they know Jesus Christ their Savior. And most of them, just like my aunt, one of them said, I've been baptized. Mm. Baptism won't get her to heaven. One said, I, I, I try to treat everybody right. I try to do good. I give to the church. I do all of these religious things, but I know that they're not saved. I knew they weren't. Just, I didn't believe that they were saved because of their action. But the counter to this ignorance is that the removal of spiritual ignorance is by knowing Christ. 
That's why Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus saw the importance of explaining it to him and remove all of this ignorance. You have to understand, you need to be born again. It's amazing to me how much more and how better I understood some of the things that I had gone through. Some of the things that people around me had gone through. Some things that my family was going through when I got saved. Because then the light comes on. Oh yeah. I get a better understanding. I went to church all of my life growing up. My wife and I, we went to the, we went to the same two churches until we went into the military. Wow. She had her church that was about a mile from her, my, her house. My yeah. church was about a mile from my house. Wow. And my wife lived about two miles from me. <laughs> growing up. That's incredible. We were very religious. We knew the importance of going to church, yeah, but we, ne- we didn't know nothing about being saved. Right. Nobody took a Bible and showed us how we need to be born again right. until Pastor Kraft, when we were in, 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 in Toronto, Spain, knocked on our doors, invited us to the church. We went several times under conviction, knowing that we weren't saved, and every time he got to the end of the message, he would always ask this question, are you 100% sure you died going to go to heaven? And Teresa and I sitting there wouldn't look at each other. But we knew that we weren't saved. That's right, Pastor. We knew that we weren't going to heaven. And he finally came to our house. Amen. I'll tell you something funny about that. Pastor Kraft was coming to our house. And he had just got to, 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 to Spain. And he come. And I'd be in his bedroom because I worked nights. I was pretending I was asleep. <laughs> evil, Pastor, evil. But I, I knew he was there. Amen. I knew what he came for. I was a little bit hesitant. And he said, oh, don't, don't, go, don't go wake him. I, I'll come back. And the next Sunday, he come to church. And he finally just called me and said, look, we need to set up an appointment. We're going to come by when you are up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we made an appointment. That's good, Pastor. That's good. He came by. He took the Bible. He asked us that same question. He took the Bible and went through several different areas of Scripture. And he showed Teresa and I how we need to be saved. And we got saved in Charles Holmes Bank. Praise the Lord. Back in 1986. Mm-hmm. And it made a difference in my life. Yes, but then I realized my family was lost. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of my family that didn't know Christ. But I knew him now. Yeah. And he's made a difference in my life. And I wanted that same Christ to make a difference in my family's life. One of my best friends that, that was a friend of mine when we went to Edwards in California... We both ended up in Toronto Homes Bay, and he came about a week later, and I was so excited about my salvation. I couldn't tell him how to get saved, Amen. but I could take him to somebody that told me how I could get saved. That's right. That's right, Pastor. So I took him to Pastor Kraft. Hmm. Pastor Kraft showed him from the Bible how he could be saved. Praise the Lord. Folks, let me say this. Don't lose your excitement Amen. about your salvation. Amen. Because when you lose it, you won't be sensitive to those around you who don't know Christ. When I got saved, I was excited about it. I told everybody that would listen. I had family members when, when we went home to be around them. I just waited for opportunity to get by alone with somebody. I'm telling them about the gospel. And folks, I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging about God. I saw a lot of my family get saved because I was willing to share the gospel with them. I had a friend of mine pick me up from the airport. I, I, it drove me home from the airport one time I went there visiting. I had the privilege of leading him to Christ. My brother picked me up one time from the airport. We traveled back and forth from Germany or from Spain. Me up. I shared the gospel with my brother. I had a privilege of taking my cousin and helping him take a, a rental car that we went to a family unit. Ride back to him and, and take a rental car somewhere we had to turn it in because we didn't want to turn it in where we were, where we were because we had to pay extra. We drove and I shared the gospel with him. I had a father who was going into surgery, and I called him on the phone, and, and I talked to my dad that morning before he went into surgery, and I had the privilege of sharing the gospel with him. There you go. I told you about Miss Miss D. I had a chance to, 
to, to visit with my aunt one time. She came to visit Teresa and I uh, uh, for Thanksgiving. I had the privilege of, uh, of going to take my aunt to visit another lady that was a cousin of my uncle who was in the hospital. And I prayed all day that God would give me the opportunity to witness to Miss P. And I had a chance to witness to Miss P. Her son, my aunt, her daughter were all sitting in the hospital room as I was sharing the gospel with her. This, this year in February, I had the privilege of preaching her funeral and sharing the gospel with them that I shared with her and saw her son, Daniel, uh, 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 da uh, Daniel, not Daniel, what is his name, uh, Teresa? Yeah. Danny, get saved. gospel makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And then we notice the illustration that God gives because evidently it wasn't getting across to Nicodemus. Look at verse number 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 five. Let's read it here. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Uh, cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it's coming, and whether it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not? These things, very, very, I say unto thee, we speak that we know and testify that we have seen. And you receive our witness, and you receive not our witness. I, if I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? In other words, Jesus gives him another illustration. I want us to quickly turn over to Numbers chapter number 21. Because the illustration that he gives him here is something that at that time, Nicodemus, I believe, understood it because historically he should remember this event. But knowledge-wise, as a teacher, he should have understood this. Numbers chapter number 21 speaks of when he gives him this illustration. He says, uh, uh, he says here about the earthly thing, no man, in verse 13, has ascended up to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. It goes back to chapter 21 of Numbers, verse number 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. There's that ignorance. There's that rejection. Whereof, wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our souls lofted this light bread, and the Lord sent fiery, fiery serpents amongst the people. And they were, they bite the people. And much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came unto Moses and said, We have we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he might take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon the pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon, it shall live. And Moses made the serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a if that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. <laughs> the serpent. 
was to be a picture of Jesus Christ. He's, he, he's giving him an illustration and showing him the corruption of the cross in verse number five. Because just like the, the, the serpent that was biting the people, sin is doing the same thing to people. Sin is, is the curse of the cross. It, it, in verse 6, it tells us that those that were bitten by the serpent, and the Lord said that there were serpents among the people, that they bite the people, and much people die. You think about it this morning. The curse of the cross, or the picture here, shows that Jesus Christ being on the cross, and all of those that would look to the serpent, in other words, look to Jesus Christ. Look to Christ. Sin brings discomfort. All of those that were bitten by the serpents, I'm sure it brought them discomfort. Just like sin brings discomfort to you and I today. Mm -hmm. Sin brings pain, sorrow, and suffering. Sin discomforts. Sin dis defiles. Sin defiles. And it says, and much people die. Mm -hmm. The poisonous venom is like what sin does to a person. The venom brings this thing of sin, corruption, pollution. Yeah. It brings uh, filthy minds and filthy thinking and, and immorality that we see in our society today. The mouth speaking as what's in the heart. We hear people saying, doing all kinds of things because of what sin mm -hmm. is doing to them. And it's like a venom from the serpent by those that were biting them because of what sin does. But it gives them a command. Look to the cross. Amen. Look to the serpent. And notice something here. In our society, is always trying to point out how they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way. Folks, there's only one serpent of brass on that pole. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a dozen of them that we hear Miss Oprah talk about. Jeez. She don't believe that Jesus is the only way. You know, and, and, and because of her position, because of the privilege that she had, because of the prestige that she had, many people are listening to people like Oprah who doubt the cross, but really what it is, she's just ignorant. She don't understand what the gospel is. And Jesus is, is telling them and speaking to Nicodemus, he's breaking it down to them a little bit more. If you can't understand earthly things, how are you going to understand spiritual things? So he breaks it down to them just a little bit more. Those that would look to the brass serpent, look to Jesus Christ. And notice something else. The serpent was a brass. There's no sin in Jesus Christ. He's sinless. The serpent or the brass serpent didn't have any, any poison in him. That's why Jesus Christ could be our sacrifice. Because he's sinless. He was put to shame. But those that would by faith put their trust in Jesus Christ and those by faith who had been bitten by the serpents, will look to the brass serpent, the scripture says they live. And a person that put their trust in Jesus Christ, spiritually speaking, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. But they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. It has to be by faith. Yes, sir. It has to be by faith. My aunts put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning, if you're listening online, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Because if you do, or if you have, you're guaranteed heaven. Amen. You're guaranteed. The illustration was simple. 
but yet the source, the singularity, and the picture spiritually was the cube. Faith in Christ, their focus in Christ, their forgiveness is in Christ. Think about it this morning. We saw here this morning the inquiry of the gospel, the ignorance about the gospel, the, the, the ignorance about the gospel. We saw the, the, the illustration, but I think one of the most important things of all of this is the inspiration that we see in John chapter 3 and verse 15, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, religion will never teach you and tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> when Nicodemus heard that, for God so, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoso believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The inspiration is God's love. When we understand that God loves us and God loves people, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for your sin Amen. and for mine. You know, one of the things that religion teaches is a cruel God, a dead God, an unspeakable God, a one that has no idea what you go through on a daily life, but Jesus does. You know what? It was unexpected. I believe for Nicodemus to hear about the love of God. Amen. I believe that those that we were witness to, it would be unexpected by them to understand how much God loves them. And his love is unequal. There's nothing like the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. You think about it this morning. We don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. We deserve a place called hell. Right. But God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for your sin and for my sin. Folks, I tell you one of the greatest privilege in all the world is to, for people to understand how much God loves them. And they'll never know if we don't tell them. Because they ought to see the love that you have for him, that you love them enough, just like him, that you would tell them about him. You know, I know this about my aunts, and I speak of them. I know this about my dad. I know this about family members. I know this is about the people that I work with. Then I told them about the gospel and about the love of God. They didn't expect to hear that. Amen. It's unequal. There's no love like Christ. Those gods that religious and religion talk about, they have no love for you. They had no love for Nicodemus. But Jesus did. Yes, he did. God he does. Did. He loves us. Amen. He loves them. Amen. He loved Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took the time to tell Nicodemus about himself and about what he needed. What about you this morning? Are you 100% sure? Those that are listening online, are you 100% sure? That if you die, you go to heaven. I tell you what Nicodemus heard. You must be born again. In order to see the kingdom of God. Born of water and of the spirit. And it takes the Holy Spirit of God to birth that person in you. And the new life that you can have in Christ. But are we excited about that this morning? To tell other people about Christ. We're going to go here in the next 25, 20 days to the left before Christmas. Amen. And we'll have privileges and we'll, we'll have opportunities to tell people about Christ. They're going to celebrate and they're looking at the presence and all the glitter and the lights and all of those things. And those things are nice. I put my lights up yesterday. Fell off the ladder. Amen. Oh, amen. Tell me myself, but oh my, I, oh it, it wasn't far. <laughs> but I enjoy the season too. Amen. But I know the God of, this, of the reason for the season. Amen. And we ought to tell people about it. Because that's what they need to hear. That's what they need to hear. They need to know. 
that Christ died for them. Jesus cares for these people. And it is sheer rejection because of their ignorance, because no one has taken the time, I believe in a lot of cases, to really share with them what it's really all about. Because you didn't until somebody explained it to you and shared it to you. And in some simple way, they help you to understand your need of Christ. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. There's no difference between the Jew or the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Aren't you glad? Heads bowed and eyes are closed. No one looking around. I think our piano she slipped out, but that's okay. I want you to think about it this morning. How many of us this morning can say without a doubt that we are 100% sure that heaven is our home? Just raise your hand right where you are. We see those hands this morning that, that are here under the sound of my voice. I see those hands going up everywhere. Maybe there's someone here, even those that are online, can you, can your head bow, your eyes are closed. I hope you're in prayer. How many of you can say by the uplift hand that you're 100% sure that heaven is your home? Maybe you're at home in the quietness of your own home. You're not sure. We're not here to embarrass you, even those that are here this morning that get, may not raise their hand. I would never do that, but I certainly want to pray for you. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not sure. Would you slip up your hand where you are? I see that hand. I want to pray for you this morning that you have a greater understanding. Maybe there's someone online that has slipped their hands up in the quietness of their home. I surely can't come to you and embarrass you, but I would say that maybe you can call this church and someone can answer the phone. The pastor myself, we have our number. And we'd be glad to share the gospel with you. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not 100% sure. Let someone take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Father, thank you for what privilege that we have this morning to have the privilege of preaching and teaching the Word of God. Thank you for our loving Savior that would take the time to show this young man how he could be saved, to give him some spiritual understanding. And I pray that this message this morning has given all of us some spiritual understanding of the simplicity of the gospel, but yet the necessity of it to share it with those that may be totally ignorant of the spiritual truth. Penetrate our hearts this morning as only you can, dear God, whether it's online or whether it's here in the presence in this auditorium. That one this morning would have the boldness to let someone take the Bible and show them how they can be saved. Those that are listening would have the same desire to know Christ as Savior. Bless now, I pray you, Lord, in a special way. Meet that need. Maybe there's someone here this morning that's going through some difficult times in life. Maybe there's someone here that's facing some tough decisions in life. Maybe there's someone that's hurting a loved one, a family, a, a, a child that's, that's gone astray. There are many needs of people that are here this morning, and I pray that God and only you can meet that need, however that need needs to be met in a special way. We lift them up to you as well, and especially that one that raised their hand this morning, that you would touch their heart, and they would receive Christ as Savior. We love you and praise you. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the canon scriptures that we have before us. We have the privilege, just like Nicodemus, of helping us not to miss the spiritual truths that we hold in our hands, because life hangs in the balance in everyone's life. We ask your blessings now upon this time, the message and the hour, we ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Did you slip out? Oh, okay. Anyway, as we have our men setting up our baptistry this morning, as we're going to look forward to baptizing our two candidates this morning, it's an exciting time for our church to be able to, or me as well, be able to do that. Uh, we've always uh, praised the Lord for young men, especially uh, young men 
that would make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege that we have this morning to have our missionaries, but also to have the privilege of baptizing this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Hall if he would come forth this morning uh, and read the scriptures for us uh, that we usually go through Romans chapter 3, verses 6 to 11. Ask him to come and read those verses of scripture. Where is he? Uh, Brother Hall, he's coming. All right. To read those scriptures for us and as we prepare for uh, the baptism. Let me say this this morning. Anyone here this morning have a testimony of something you'd like to share as we continue to get prepared and ready for uh, baptism? Anyone have? Uh, I won't say. <clears throat> Anyone have a testimony you'd like to share of anything God's doing in your life? All right, we're going to have Brother Hall come, and he is going to read the scriptures for us this morning as we refer to uh, baptism. Romans chapter 3, verses, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. I'm sorry. Okay. and a privilege for me uh, again this morning uh, to baptize another young man that I've watched grow up and he is taller than me now, amen? amen. And uh, Josiah has uh, been a blessing, nice and cool. I know you're a tough young man, amen? Uh, <laughs> he's getting it all, he's getting it all warm. the gospel of Jesus Christ that saved him. And you have, uh, Josiah, you have a testimony, you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you have a verse of scripture you share with us about your faith in Christ. Amen. That's why you think it's over with. Amen. All right. Okay. My brother, he is now. I'm going to take one hand and I'm going to there. Okay, to get it right. Um, is I, I, I want to say this about Satan. I don't, 
I tell you what, slip forward a little bit. These men want to get their baptism. <laughs> baptizing his father now. He was like, there, there. This guy saved him. Or he dedicated himself to the Lord. He's a co-worker that I have to put up with every day. And then, uh, but uh, I praise the Lord for him. And then his son, I want you to put this one here. No, I'm going to do this first. All right? <laughs> are you, are you, uh, you know Christ as your Savior? Yes. Amen. You know Christ as Savior. You have the verse of scripture. Which one? Which one? Psalm 37. Thank you. 